cultivate transparent existential responsibility. And I'm going to explain what that means. Hello everyone. In life, we are responsible for our immediate body, which is our physical body. You wake up, you go to the shower, you wash your face, and hopefully you do these things. <laughs> so, we see that you are maintaining your physicality regardless of the story and the character you are. You are present, you wake up and you look around you, you see the room, you see the walls, you also go outside, you see the trees, you see the grass, you hear the noise, but you realize on some level a part of you is maintaining all of this. So there is a self-maintenance uh, present within how the intelligence of man is keeping it, keeping, self, keeping itself here. So what that means is that you see that because you're present, because you exist, you just have the most immediate existential responsibility of being present. So that is what you are in this plane. Now when I say cultivate transparent existential responsibility, what that means is that through transparent views of life, in other words, through moments in life where you feel more as an observer, not an observer watching someone else, as an observer observing your whole moment of being, right? And so let's say as you feel this observer, you suddenly get a sense of uh, a sympathy or empathy simply because you are observing more of the reality in which another person's suffering could be in. So what that means is that self-awareness and this path where many people go into becoming more sensitive, life sensitive, they suddenly see, they see more suffering actually. You begin seeing lots more suffering. So the person who has the gold chain around his neck, he does see suffering. Every human being sees suffering because we're in a sense going through change and we're seeing others go through change. But uh, to have it be real, it's not something to avoid. So there are some people who they go in a condition, the condition's not good, they leave, right? And sometimes you need to leave to be able to be a solution for your environment. However, it is important that where you are, regardless of what decision you make based on ideology next, you take complete existential responsibility for yourself. So you begin to appreciate and be happy that you are alive and present. And you need to observe the beauty of you being alive. You're alive, man. <laughs> And what that really means is that sometimes we, 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 get, we bathe in ideology and imagery to a degree that we forget what is conscious. And so we think we know what is conscious, so we stop asking. And when life sees we're too convinced, an experience comes that wakes us up. And when you know you've gone through that experience, you see that you can't live the same. What that means is that if, if you were like Buddha who was in, 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 uh, trapped in his a castle which was the reality his father had made for him because his father did not want him to go towards spirituality or mysticism or anything of the unknown or becoming a man uh, who is in a sense like a monk or holy or whatnot. So he, the father kept him until he went and suddenly had this transition and suddenly saw reality and saw that it's not just sometimes how we're interpreting the story. The character in the story has a totally different understanding of reality than the storyteller. So I want to take your experience from the character to the storyteller, because it is the same experience. And it is in a sense not something I can take you to, but I can only speak it until you see that you must look at yourself for all the answers you see. There was a time in my life where, um, I met this person who I would ask questions from, and I wouldn't ask too many questions, but sometimes I'd be curious. I'd be like, whoa, she, it's as if like she's more in the know, so let me ask. And I noticed that when I would, you recognize the hollowness of your question when you know you are the answer. <laughs> so what that means is that all those acts that people do not to confront something, at the end they know, gosh, I gotta go confront it. Yeah, I took your cookie, you know, and you, you, you go, you go to, through the wreckage which you were a cause of. And sometimes, guys, you are, you are not just existentially responsible for just your immediate body only. You will see that as, as, the, as the mystic's love for the unknown uh, increases and he becomes more com compassionate to view in, in the newest ways, existential responsibility is present because you see existence has allowed you to consider things you are a design that has suddenly pre been presented in this reality and now you're aware and you can engage so do not think you are you are just a, a, a very very simple object 
No, you are an awareness to an object which can navigate that object into, into many dimensions of conception. And so in a sense, you are playfully multidimensional in nature, in how you are life. Because that observance cannot be limited to the object of observance. So you may wear glasses and you may look at yourself with, let's say, Ray-Bans in the mirror. But you know that your real eyes are there, too, you know? So it's your choice how much you want to, in a sense, in an instant, with your intention and authentic and natural knowing, to, in a sense, transition reality and, in a sense, call all forms to become clear. Because clarity requires an instant of your knowing. Transcendence is not a game, and so when the game dissolves into direct experience of all that is, very playfully said, you will see that you're, you're no longer the same you to even have the same responsibilities as the same you. So, for example, you're no longer the five-year-old self. So, in other words, man, uh, we are growing linearly, let's say, we are, in a sense, aging. However, that is a reality of conception we have chosen to wear. So that is the cloth you're wearing by saying, I agree to this, I believe this, I believe this. And to be honest, it's not for others. Because sometimes we can communicate things to others which are not authentically real to us. For example, that's how we find good salesmen who sell us fridges we don't need, right? And perhaps such, such acts lead to the inspiration of self-fridges, you know? <laughs> what made that company sell more than fridges? <laughs> Gosh. Anyways. Um, to, to very clearly communicate this is that it, it, is, it is a transition and so you see the transparent aspect of your reality is simply your observance of it, your awareness to it. And so when you dissolve into the present moment, as playfully said, in a sense where you are no longer considering, oh these are the clothes I have wear, worn, you are in a sense recognizing you're like that naked king who uh, those thieves made him wear for example, invisible garments. You know, you, you see that this reality, it's not that its physicality is not here, it's that the significance is not just here when you are an observer beyond form, when you are a formless presence, when you can see that when you look at the sky, there is no end to conceive, and so why conceive the moment into limitation? You must allow yourself. And so in, in, in trusting life and in going through your experiences and trusting more the intensity of the experience. So in other words, when, for example, one thing comes to you and you get punched in the face randomly, let's say, <laughs> you must be comfortable and recognize that that happened to you because that was where your experience was heading. So don't think that you are less than that experience or greater than that experience. Have a self-conscious humility, which means do not accept that you are an idea when you know you are beyond the idea. And this is very important because I'm not seeing it really be present in the minds of men. We, we, we look at different aspects of reality and we wonder what and who and from where is there an awareness that is even defining things to consider. And so we see that it's as if uh, there, was a, there was this uh, cosmic cosmic designer who in a sense designed us but in such an intense and solid form that our awareness would only be allowance. So you would see your expansion in this life is simply your allowance and you will see that playfulness and actually the true value in that moment where they say if you can't beat them, join them. See that doesn't have to have a story. That simply means if life is pulling you towards a direction, allow it. Because if you don't, you will see it's still pulling you to that direction. So similarly, if you're suddenly interested in, for example, technology, but you've been raised in an environment that never had one, you need to see that your mind could always have anything. In other words, if you can't physically, for example, some, have something, you can have an awareness of that form. And so how intensely you make that form real for you is up to you. That is the, simply the pilot of consciousness, is subtler experiences where it's, it, it's, you, you see that the simultaneous realities are in man's ability to communicate, to then open up a greater uh, view of movement. So what that means, it's funny, it's like man needs to spiral and move up at the same time. Do you know what I mean? In, in other words, move, move, move both horizontally and vertically at the same time. So it's like the spiraling network 
of how consciousness is recognizing it is using both duality to lift up. So you're using all the good forms and the bad forms to then be this, this sense of reference to then use them. So in other words, when you speak, you're using a collection of words. You're not thinking in your head, oh, I have this word in the bag, this word in the bag, this word in the bag. You know, it's not a file cabinet in your mind. It simply projects itself when you have an intention as an energy to present something. So when you have an intention to present yourself to yourself, that is when the presence of you becomes very amplified. You begin to see that you're no longer looking at yourself in your eyes, but life is looking at you in ways where it is always within you. What that means is it takes you beyond your ability to conceive limitation. You are pulled by your greater experience. And so you need to allow this because the intensity of it means that the advanced communicator just opens up to in how many ways he, he can be, but he's not consciously using it. So what that means is that some people sometimes they, they have experiences of projection and experiences of movement. That means suddenly you, instead of you going down up, up the stairs and uh, looking at the, you know, the whole museum uh, properly, you just went on one floor and stopped. So what that means is you cannot move beyond. You will not have the inspiration if you do not observe your limitation. You will not have inspiration if you're constantly seeing, okay, this object, it looks like this and I look like it, so I can't do anything. You know, if you have this view in which the objectified reality is limiting the vastness of your mind, then that is when the veil must be torn apart from inside. You must realize it is not up to anyone else to reveal truth to you. You are your center of truth. You are the origin of its awareness. And so the self-awareness beyond man's uh, mechanical instrument or biological instrument is the originator of form. So what that means is that uh, our way of thinking of designing things is to first work with a, a spectrum that's, uh, for example, uh, already separated. So what that means is that um, there are different levels of self-awareness in which a designer can apply a sense of creativity to reality as a being. So what that means is that an advanced communicator sees that he has acknowledged all words which are simply all the bodies. But now he's also acknowledging how the words are being used by an intelligence. So you see, when you move your physical body, when you move your bodies of thought, you begin getting excited, you begin moving into a state of state. So you're moving up the spiral of self-awareness, right? And in a sense, it's, it's always going back within itself. You, you'll discover this as your nature shows you the, 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 the presence of self-reflection. There are certain aspects to uh, this plane of reality which self-reflectively you get an observance to even be present in that dynamic. So simply your states of being transition as you have an awareness to your bodies because once you have an observance beyond your body, you no longer can conceive your body through the limitation. What that means is that uh, once you turn, for example, 24, you are no longer, for example, uh, the same person you were, for example, uh, when you were let's say five years old or something. You, you would see how reality is not convinced and that is why it is allowing itself to grow. So the importance of cultivating transparent existential responsibility really means the importance of you looking at yourself, observing the life you are, observing your dimensions, observing how uh, you are multidimensional in unspeakable ways which you can't even communicate. Don't try to communicate it. It's like you're trying to write down a very fast speech you're giving. You, you don't try it. Because once you do, you will see it's dulling down the experience. It's not going at the same flow. And so the poets have found this because poets are, are in a sense, mystics in a, in a sense. People who are inspired by the unknown suddenly see that they are giving themselves the existential allowance and being responsible for change. So what that means is that, for example, when I go to a store, right, I have a sense of responsibility of getting the item, getting it in my hand, taking it to the cashier. Now in subtler planes of thought, you see, you have a responsibility to all that you are aware of. So right now, you're not taking a lot of responsibility if you're thinking you're just this physical body. You need to think, not that you're just some spirit or something floating around, but you're your moment of experience, your, your moment of existence. And so that is where your significance is found. That is when you are really becoming aware of what origin means to you. Is, is that origin story something external? Is it, or is it, in a sense, the knowing of your home, uh, regardless of where you are? 
So existential responsibility, you will kind of realize, oh, so that's why the Dalai Lama was doing it. Because he saw that man's psychology is affected by his communication. And if we are agitated into communicating in ways that are constantly creating our illusions, while some people are trying to create uh, the clarity beyond the illusion, that is when you see that there is more to what you think. So an aspect of you is acknowledging itself here, and an aspect of you is always looking at acknowledging itself beyond here. And so this is the playfulness of how simultaneous realities are simply there. They are in the design of imagery. So what that means is that I see a branch, uh, I see a tree and the, the shape of the tree, the way the branches of the tree can immediately translate into, for example, uh, my application of bringing number, shape, light, or whatever other um, meaning and image. Because you see, you have the existential responsibility to get involved with all things when you recognize that you are the origin of all things in your reality. And take existential responsibility and see that you are the, this is your life, this is what's real to you. So if what's real to you, you're not treating it 100% as if it's real to you, then it's not really real for you. So what that means is look around your life, look at yourself in the mirror, look at yourself, really physically look at yourself. Don't judge the physicality, just look at what is present. That is how ener your energy, your intention to be physical has come. This is how your moment has produced you. Now, what can you produce, in a sense, from your ability to move an individual body that will give enlightenment to the whole existence? And you will see it is the beauty in how you are communicating with all life. And so you need to push yourself by acknowledging that you are not your limitation, because your limitation, if it, you give it shape, you're limiting yourself to a solidified reality when you have different uh, uh, movements in your being uh, motivating you. So there are some times where I notice, oh wow, there's something that needs to, for example, there are emergencies where you will see that it's like, if the moment gets too intense and not like a normal emergency, you allow yourself to go flow. So what that means is that you think you, are, you have to meditate and go to, into, the, into a different state. Actually, that's your natural state. You are conceiving so well that you're here. And so that is why it's an illusion. Because when, when I'm in the right house, but I'm just not looking around, that's my problem. No? And so the problem is not really there, it's just how you're looking at it that's creating a problem. So how you're looking at what is really there is in a sense the importance of going towards a sense of nirvana. Because everyone understands that it is the mind of man that is aware of shape. Because that's the term we've given it, that's it, it's, it's our mind, it's our mind that's here. I have a mind, right? That's how I'm talking. However, how much existentially have we explored? How much responsibility have we taken for abstract imagery? What that means is that many people produce things, create things, say things without really seeing where those words are going. If Imagine every time you spoke, you could hear how you spoke, you would never get angry. Because you would be observant of self and see that the self is not meant to be this agitated. And if it is, it is the illusion of a self too convinced. Think of yourself. Let's say you were given truth. Let's say scientists and everybody and just mankind figured out the meaning of the universe. What next? What could possibly happen next? We are an individual imagery and our imagery can simply speed up in our integration. So it doesn't matter how the culture and society moves when you see it's as temporal as, for example, you. But in a sense, the importance of authentic expression remains. Because some people look at this life and they see an emptiness and they're like, oh, there's no meaning in life. And they're thinking of uh, decomposing themselves in a sense, in a sense, getting rid of themselves. And that is a ridiculous idea because Death is not something to play with, just as you don't want your life to be something to be played with. So do not play uh, in changing natural ideas in your head and thinking that there's something else. So what that means is that I, I, man gives imagery to death before he's acknowledged it, before he's gone through the experience, you know. And 
that is where his problem lies because how he's approaching his transition from one state of form into another state of conception and awareness is very important and many people don't it's not that they don't do it well but they think that they're not doing it well so they constantly come back to the same shape it's one of those things that if you stop judging yourself so much you will see there's no judgment why is there judgment you're just you're just sitting in a room there's no thought there's no, you're not a thinker you can be a thinker if you begin putting your attention but you're you're simply a presence and so this presence has an ability to be very complete within its moment so incompletion is a choice when completion is natural when i begin seeing that life is moving towards a collective intelligence from its individuality you will treat your plane of reality or the pilot of consciousness will inu into innately know this from the moment he comes into the plane that he has some deep love for this plane of existence but it is not the immediate imagery where this love is what that means is that it's an existential knowing that there is great beauty you're standing on but damn our culture can't acknowledge it because we're acknowledging ourselves in that way so you need to create the communication of it. You need to step into places where man has not stepped. We've explored now most of the world, or as much of it as we believe, but there is so much to man's mind or how you even are aware of a mind that is just so multidimensional in nature, so abstract and then transitioning into multiple views of real and lack of realness. So you will see that there are certain intensities of you looking at reality that it's like me perceiving, for example, another view of where I am now is a much more intense look. So if there's no inspiration to move you, if there's no guidance and no purpose in that you being in that energetic experience, you will not go in that energetic experience because it will, in a sense, uh, navigate your attention from your physical vehicle. And in a sense, you, you, you can't navigate like that. There's a greater intelligence. You're keeping yourself always in greater ways, but you need to show yourself to yourself. So what that means is at that moment, when you have the same intensity of going and judging your boss because he's, he said something wrong and you have something like that intensity of standing up for yourself into really confronting, it's like, who are you? Imagine if you could say that to someone with the most intensity, right? Someone you really wanted to know who they are or to say something to them, you would see that that same intensity also needs to be present in how you acknowledge yourself. So I, I noticed that for most of my time, I had a lot of ambitions, I had a lot of dreams, but I was not doing any action. The action was missing, but the, the motivation and you know, the motivational YouTube videos were, were there, but it, it, it was just, it's, it's like there was a missing engagement. So when you are sitting on that couch and wondering if the speed of your life is slow or not, that's wrong, that's, that's, not, that's, that's a problem. You should not be even thinking of how fast your life is. You should be so engaged that you are like, it is instant. Just the experiences and the profundity that is present in my observance is instant. And it always is. Trust me, it is. Because in an instant, you know who you are. <laughs> you know where your home is. So that certainty in, in the application of form within this hologram is important. Because man will discover that it's not that these hands will create the machinery that will guide him to his, the technologies that will guide him from his to his transcendence. He will see that the hands that will guide his present reality will be his own more greater sense of self-awareness guiding the limited associations of a self. So right now, are you limited by how you thought when you were a five-year-old? Or in a sense, let me say it like this. Do you feel you know more than your five-year-old self? You'll be like, of course I do. Look at, I've, I've, I've lived much more. So, know that even this sense of position, which who you are right now is five-year-old in a much more transcendental way in regards to other intelligences and aspects of how you are navigating yourself. Cultivate transparent existential responsibility and become that compassion that emanates from the Dalai Lama's eyes when he sees that life is beautifully uh, prospering 
You know, it's, it's, it's as if like you are ignoring the fact that you're not in a good world because you're so convinced you're in a bad one because you're only looking at yourself. Beauty begins with an integrative view uh, in looking at your sense of other. You take your sense of other and you make it as equal as to you and you're like, now we are pe at the peace, you know? And not that you bring it to a lesser point, all this is naturally done. What that means is that the way I walk, I might think about, oh, I'm gonna be late for this class or what class, but I have, I'm not thinking about how I'm walking, I know how to walk, for example, right? So how can you bring your mind into a state of acknowledgement and confrontation where you're like that advanced communicator where every, pres every moment you're such an explorer of your unknown, such a lover of the beauty of the vastness of infinity, that you are just receiving, just, how do I say it? You will see your eyes glow, and it will be a glow that is not trying to do something, but has always done it. It's always there, when it knows it's here. I hope this talk has served you. This life is very wondrous. And what that means is that there's some angles that you, you have not seen existentially in regards to as consciousness in which your life can be maintained in such a fruitful way. Where the seeds of your design could never be hindered by the dirt. And so you're, you're found in, in a vision that has always carried you. Oh, money pot. Much blessings and Namaste.